Hi folks, in this video we're going to be looking at how to paint the fuchsia robes on this Death Guard Plague Surgeon, very similar to the box art. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out, I'll be applying a base coat, which is a 50-50 mix of Screamer Pink and Phoenician Purple from Games Workshop over the grey primer from the previous tutorial I did on this Death Guard miniature. And I'm going to be using this as our shadow tone on the robes, so we don't have to be particularly neat or avoid any areas of the robes like the raised areas. I've thinned this down with a little bit of water, so I'm looking to get two or three thin coats to get all over the robe. And you don't have to be especially neat, but I would try to recommend not getting onto any of the areas that you've already painted. If you do get something onto the green armor, don't worry though, all you have to do is come back in with the base coat from the green area and make some touch-ups to any mistakes that you might have made. None of us are infallible, and if you're painting a large army, it's more than likely that you're going to make a couple of mistakes when applying this base coat. The trick is to not panic, wait for it to dry, and then paint over it. The Phoenician purple is quite a strong tinted colour, so you may find that you want to put your mixture slightly more Screamer Pink than Phoenician purple. It depends how dark you want your shadows to be and how much of a pink effect you want in the final robe. Once your base coat has dried, the robe should look something like this. For the first highlight, I'll be coming in with Screamer Pink from Games Workshop. And although it looks like quite a bright colour difference going on here, it will darken down a lot once it's applied. A lot of red and pink tones do dry darker than how they appear when you initially brush them onto the model. And with this, I have thinned it down with a little bit of water, and I'm going to be covering about 80 to 90% of the robe area. What I want to do is leave our 50-50 mix of this colour and the Phoenician purple in the recesses and shadow areas of the model. If you're not 100% sure what those are going to be, you can use a strong light from above the model or for a directional light that he used on the armour to really emphasise those shadows and highlights. You can also take a picture of the model and have a look at it on your phone screen where you can zoom in and out nice and easy to see where the light and the shadows are hitting on this model. So just like in the other step, I'm going to be looking at applying this in a couple of thin coats and I'm not being too neat. There's nothing stopping you going back and using your initial base coat if you think you cover too much area or on your next pass covering a little bit more than you did on your first coat, just to emphasize a, a slighter shadow on the model. And if you want to start making a transitional blend with this, each time you make a new pass on this color, you can do a slightly smaller area. Generally, I wouldn't bother too much with that because we're looking at just trying to get more of a base coat down that isn't touching the very deepest shadows on the miniature. This Plague Surgeon model has a lot of interesting shapes in the cloth that make this a really good miniature for learning how to paint volumetric light and shadow on different bits of cloth. It's not just a useful model if you're painting Death Guard, but as a painter, I really would recommend this model to learn how to paint volumetric blending on cloth. As you can see with his gut overhang there, that bit of cloth, it gives us a nice ridge that we can pull the pigment down to at the top of the ridge and leave that underneath in shadow while painting brighter on the bit that hangs underneath giving us that nice shadowed area in the cloth and it's the same with these tassels that are coming down we're going to be painting quite bright at the top having a little bit of shadow as it drapes over and then much more brighter as it comes down where the light is going to be hitting strongest and when it comes to painting his hood I am leaving that top very peak in shadow and then painting the backwards part of the hood all in this base color. And then I'm using a wet brush to feather out the difference between them. So as you can see here, I'm painting quite bright with this color 
around the top but leaving that little bit of shadow as that hood starts to lean forward and that's just although that would probably be quite bright in reality it does give us that little bit of visual interest on the model after two or three thin passes the screamer pink layer up should look something like this depending on how dark you did your initial base coat for the next highlight on this Death Guard Plague Surgeon's ropes, I'll be coming in with some Warlord Purple from Viejo Game Color. And this paint, although quite transparent when being applied to the model, is pretty much a 50-50 mix of Screamer Pink and Pink Horror from Games Workshop. And due to the thinner, more transparent nature of this paint, once you thin it down, it becomes incredibly workable. So this is a really good paint for feathering out with a wet brush, a transition between our previous color and this one. And I do like using this paint rather than mixing from the Games Workshop range, as if you're doing a whole bunch of models with this, or you've got to paint a bit and then come back to it later, this paint does allow you to be hugely consistent with the color you're applying to the model. And as you can see, as I've painted this flat area on the side of his robe, that it is quite transparent going on, and that's okay. And it does look incredibly vibrant at this stage, but don't worry, it will darken down. And as you can see here, I'm coming in with a wet brush once I've applied it, and moving backwards and forwards quickly over it, and as you can see, it's starting to feather out really nicely into this lovely smooth blend. And I've hardly had to do any work on that, it's all done it itself. And so with this color, it's just a matter of picking out all those raised edges and picking out the areas on the flat areas of the folds of his cloak that you want to be hit with light. Just like with the previous step, a xenophil focus on how this cloth is highlighted is gonna be the biggest key to the aesthetic look at the end of this model. And so as you can see here, I'm painting over a smaller area that I've done with that scream of pink and using a wet clean brush to make sure that the pigment is feathered out towards the areas that I want them to be shadowed. And the real big thing to remember when doing any form of xenophil highlighting is that the pigment will be strongest where you leave the brush and pick it up off the model. So as you saw on these folds here, where I'm bringing this pigment down towards this ridge here on this stomach fold, the pigment is going to be left strongest there. So the higher bits will be left in shadow and the pigment will be strongest at the bottom, giving us that lovely, nice transition. And if you're doing this in a couple of passes, painting over a smaller area each time, with very little effort, you are going to start to build up a nice layering fade between the different colors. And don't stress, if you cover too much or you don't cover enough, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. As long as you take your time to think about where the light is going to be the strongest, a lot of this comes down to taste, and there is nothing stopping you, once the paint is dried, from coming in with your previous color and softening out that transition again with some thin layers and feathering out with a wet brush. After a couple of passes, we've managed to get this nice dark purpley pink all the way up to a fuchsia tone on these robes. The last highlight on this Death Guard's robe is arguably the easiest. And for this, I'm picking out those sharpest areas and the uppermost areas of the folds in the robes with Pink Horror from Games Workshop. And I haven't so much as thinned this down for a blending consistency. This is more, I have worked it out a little bit onto the palette to keep it nice and controllable, but it's more that the brush is wet rather than this is a completely thinned down paint. I've kept it wet enough that you can sort of feather it out there as seen on the top, but this is generally needed to do by loading up the brush with a bit more water. And the reason I've kept this paint slightly thicker is it's much easier to control this edge highlight on these very fine edges of the folds with a paint that's a little bit thicker. It gives me a little bit more control than if I'm doing layering and glazing. And with the side of my brush, allows me to get some really nice contrasting highlights on the robe. 
And with this, I don't necessarily suggest highlighting the whole thing. As you can see there, I have left some stylistic choice breaks in that highlight, because this will allow me to give some control of exactly where I want which bits of the cloak to be brightest. If you see some of these areas where the fold's quite a soft area, you might want to leave that on its previous highlight. Or you might want to thin this right down and glaze a highlight onto it. It's entirely up to you. What I do recommend is with these Death Guard robes is they do have a lot of cuts and tears and holes in them. With this paint, underline each of those tears in the cloth as it will really aid to the illusion of depth on this model when in reality it's not actually much of a pronounced hole in the cloth. It'll really help to give a sense of scale. And with this, it's just a matter of taking your heart bracing your hands against the table and not panicking if you make a mistake. You can always wait for it to dry and come back with a previous colour to make any corrections on the model. And if the paint is still wet, like there, you can wipe it away with your thumb or your finger and you can try again. And with that last highlight applied, the robe on this Death Guard Plague Surgeon is now complete. And as you can see, that this sort of finish with this blending and fine edge highlight of the raised areas of the cloth comes more with patience and layering rather than it does from having a miraculous talent and anyone can produce cloth to this standard with a little bit of practice. And if you like this tutorial, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge, it helps me out, and you can get further tutorials just like this one on your feed. So. Until next time, folks.